This is the One Lens Challenge 2470 edition here, parking lot industrial style. Let's jump in. My name is Pi, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and SLRLounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. What's up guys, my name is Pi and this is Renee. We're gonna go ahead and link her up so you guys can give her a follow. We are doing a one lens challenge here actually right next to our studio. We're gonna utilize the parking lot. It's kind of been raining, kind of sunny, so we'll see what we get. And we're gonna roam around and create some cool images. You ready to do this? Yeah. Let's jump in. Okay. So you might be asking yourself, why a parking lot? Well, because we're faced with crappy situations all the time. And it's kind of cool to see what somebody else might do in those situations to get a cool shot. Now today we're using the 2470. I'm gonna go ahead and let some of these cars pass. I'll tell you more about it. Okay, so we've arrived at our first spot. I wanna kind of show you what I'm seeing. So right now the sun has popped out and we do have some direct sunlight, but that's okay. What we're gonna do is actually have her kind of work her angle and her position towards the light. So instead of looking kind of away from the light like this, so look away towards that side, we're actually gonna have Renee kind of bring the chin towards this side. All you really need to do is just tell your subject, tell your model to keep their chin facing that direction. We get a really nice, beautiful light. Now, why this spot? I love the texture of these vines, these kind of dead vines on the wall. I also like the leaves that are on the ground because this is what I'm seeing. Those leaves on the ground actually match the same color of her skin tone, or at least very similar. The black and kind of texture of the vines matches the black and the outfit that she's wearing. So we get this really cool contrasty vibe. I'm gonna go ahead, stop talking and dial in my settings and shoot this shot. So let's do this. Keep in mind that on a 2470, I'm not gonna get tons of depth. So if I do want a little bit of blur in the background, I need to bring Renee off the background. Let me demonstrate this. So Renee, scoot back a little bit. Keep going. So even at f2.8, right? If I'm shooting this, let's say around 35 millimeters, I am not gonna see tons of depth in the shot. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and dial in my exposure. To do this, I like to use the histogram in these types of situations because, well, it's hard to see what's actually bright enough. So I'm gonna go to one one thousandth of a second and right about there, F2.8 and ISO 100, that's great. And let's go ahead and shoot this first shot. Now I like it, but again, I'm not gonna see a lot of depth there even when shooting wide open unless I finagle the kind of distance between the background and all that stuff. So watch this, Renee, step forward. What I'm gonna do now is step back, and this is how you're gonna get that little bit of extra depth out of say a 2470. Step back, we're gonna zoom in, and now I'm gonna include the leaves in the shot. And look at how cool this looks, like the leaves going across the bottom. I mean, this is just straight out of camera. I haven't done anything to it yet. The leaves match her complexion. We have this beautiful black on the wall. What I'm gonna do now is just make a small tweak. Um, that bird poop on the wall is not like doing it for me. So what I'm gonna do is actually try to cover it up. So let's see here. I have a couple different ways of doing this. The leaves that I want are directly in this spot. So I might kind of be stuck. I also want her, you know what I can do? I can push her this way a little bit and I can get her to sort of block out at least part of the, the white poop on the wall, and then I can Photoshop out the rest. I can't really do much else because the leaves aren't in any other spot here, and she's also framed in this spot of the, the vines where we have this nice kind of like little natural framing going on. So I'm gonna leave it right there, and now, yes, I love it. Go ahead and move with each click. I'm framing her kind of in the right third. Now, as the sun kind of changes, I'm gonna pay attention to my overall exposure. So the sun kind of poked out. So what I'm gonna do is just darken the, the exposure a little bit. And this is exactly what I want anyway. I love that. I love it. Let's do a couple of vertical shots too. I love those. So let me show you what I'm talking about with the leaves. I'm actually gonna punch in just for kind of a tighter shot here. Okay, and Renee, bring the chin this way a little bit, right there. And you're just gonna stay right there, Renee, okay? 
Okay, so that is the shot without leaves, right? So if I zoom out though from right there and shoot the exact same shot, I want you to see how the leaves kind of tie in the color of the complexion at the bottom of the frame. It adds a lot of interest to the shot. So look for stuff like that naturally occurring in your scenes. Okay, so before you leave this spot, we have this beautiful light direction happening, right? So if Renee kind of looks down and towards this side and we come from this angle against the sunlight, so the sun is on that side, we get this really beautiful highlight along the hair and with a darker background, all of that's gonna pop. So this is where we're gonna take advantage of the fact that we're on a zoom lens. I'm gonna zoom all the way to 70 millimeters, shoot this at f2.8, get close, and this time we're gonna get some nice depth with detail in the background. And keep in mind, I'm kind of shooting this at an angle, so we also have this kind of background that disappears towards the left of the frame. So let me show you what I mean. Renee, brush the hair a little bit so I can see on this side there. I love that. Look down to the ground, chin down a little bit more, right there. Beautiful. Feel free to move with it. I love that. So we get this really great depth in the background. We get these really cool shots, especially I love the shots where we can see that highlight coming right across that cheek. So right here, we get that beautiful highlight, the texture in the hair, it looks absolutely amazing. So check this out. Renee and I stumbled onto a branch. Now you might see a branch, but I see potential. Do you see the potential? Yes. Definitely. You do? <laughs> okay. So check this out. This branch is, is pretty cool. Now I don't want you to use this like grungy side, this dirty side. I'm just gonna use this side where we have nice colors. Again, colors that match her complexion, right? So the first thing I, I might do is when I pick up something like this, I might just kind of start shooting where I kind of hold this in front of the lens as a foreground object, right? Well, we can get depth here as long as we are somewhat zoomed in, like say around 50 millimeters, we're still at f2.8. Let's look at the exposure. Exposure's good. In fact, I might have you look towards this side a little bit. There you go. So exposure looks good. I'm at 1 2500 of a second right now, f2.8 and ISO 100, okay? And I'm gonna bring this up and I'm gonna kinda use this space in here to frame her. So here we go. Now, this looks okay to me, but the issue is that the leaves kinda match the same brightness as her skin tone, right? And because they are directly lit by the sun, we don't really get that great of a shot. So what I want you to do when you do this is actually just tweak the direction a little bit. So I'm gonna keep everything identical. All I'm gonna do is move towards this side and we're gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna zoom in just a bit more. Let's go to 70 millimeters and let's see. Renee, I think I can hold this myself, but what if you were actually holding this with that hand? And let's see where the distance is. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna hold it for her. We're gonna go right here. Oh, I love that right there where you're kind of looking down. Look down just like that. Yes, now look at the camera. Gorgeous. Yes. Sorry, I got excited for a second there. I totally forgot to tell you what I was doing. So now with the sun directly coming into this, right, it's backlit and with it up to the camera, you'll see these shots now look dramatically different. I've done one thing here. I've actually brightened the exposure for her skin tone. So now we get this really cool kind of highlight and we're still using a zoom lens. We're still getting great bokeh, that foreground effect. We're getting great depth with a zoom lens. That's what's really cool about these kind of challenges is it forces us to kind of get what we wanna get out of the lenses that we thought really couldn't do those things. Like we usually think that to get, that was a lot of words without even making any sense. I don't even know what I said right there. So look, what I'm trying to say is, normally we think that we have to create depth with a prime lens, right? A 50 millimeter wide open, an 85 millimeter wide open at f1.2, but we don't. What we need to do is understand the lens mechanics. And right now, all we're doing is zooming in, keeping the aperture low, placing an object in front that's backlit, and we get those shots. Now I'm gonna shut up and few, shoot a few more of these. Let's go ahead and do, yes. So I want you guys to keep one thing in mind. If I bring the lens down low, notice how her hair is placed against the bright area of the sky. We kind of lose the hair light, right? 
What makes the hair light emphasized is the fact that we're raising the lens to put her head in front of a background that's darker. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that as I'm shooting, I'm not lowering that camera too much. So right here is perfect. I love that. All right, we have stumbled our way into an incredible photograph. Just look at this. Oh my goodness. Look at this. What do you think about that? <laughs> Tell the truth, Renee. This was a test to see if you're like, are you willing to give it to me straight? It's okay. <laughs> okay. So the cool thing about it just raining is that we have these puddles kind of everywhere, right? Now I wanna frame my way into a really interesting shot. This is one of the reasons I love having a 2470 on me because you have that, well, what you've seen so far is us kind of going in tight, working the lens to get depth and kind of shooting close up portraits, all of that. But now we can swing it out wide. And what I'm gonna do is actually step onto this side. I'm gonna also switch out to 24 millimeters. So I'm shooting as wide as I can get now. The sun is coming from kind of right over my left shoulder. So I'm gonna have her working poses kind of towards that sunlight. And then what I'm gonna do is get down low. See from up here, the shot's really not that interesting. But what I'm gonna do is actually get down low and you'll notice, I want you to pay attention to where I'm framing her. See, I'm framing her in a spot where she's actually covering the stop sign as well as that fire hydrant. See, if I hold this out to this side, this is not quite the right framing, right? But as soon as I bring it over here, I can cover not only the, the stop sign and the fire hydrant, but I can actually use the break in the buildings itself to become a natural frame for her. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna pull up my pants so I don't end up flashing all y'all. That's not why you're here, you know what I mean? Okay, and now, yes. Renee, I'm shooting kind of wide on this one and we see this great background behind you. So I want you to create shapes with your body so that way we can see kind of like all the spaces and the negative space between, okay? Yes. Yes, and look away from the camera. Hold that exact pose, look away from the camera. Better? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I love that look. I mean, compared to that first shot, all we had to do is really change the angle, get down low, go wide. I mean, all we really had to do, there's a few steps in there, but when you see a puddle like this, kind of think of those different angles. Now, as the sun comes out, this is actually exactly what I want. So I'm gonna shoot a few more images because I want that direct hard sunlight right on her. It gives me extra contrast and helps her pop from the frame. So before the sun goes behind clouds again, I'm gonna shoot it one more time. Love it. Okay, so here we have a really cool scene, but I want you to kind of imagine what I'm thinking here. These lines make for really great leading lines going into our subject. So what I'm gonna do to exaggerate those lines, this is when I'm gonna throw this out to 24 millimeters. We're gonna shoot as wide as possible on this, and I wanna change my perspective. See, if I take this shot, it's pretty cool, but the perspective of the building itself is not that interesting. So I actually wanna fill out the background and kind of make it a little bit more, well, make it a little bit more concrete leading into her. And then the background elements, certain pieces we're gonna actually have to Photoshop out. There's not really any way to get them out of the frame. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna bring the camera down low. Now, it would be great if we had a little bit of extra width in this, but we don't. So what I'm gonna do is have her kneel down and kind of come into a cool kneeling stance in the frame. And then we're gonna lower the camera right down to the ground. And I'm gonna find a spot where I can get a couple more of these lines leading right into her. Right about there is where I want it. I dig that. Now, if I get closer to her, I can actually get a little more exaggeration on her stance, but we are gonna lose a little bit of the lines, but let's go ahead and do that anyway. So I'm gonna get a little closer right there. I love that right there, beautiful. Now, can you do that playing with the hair thing, but extend the front leg a little bit more? This is like acrobatic positions here. You're doing fantastic. Yes, right there. I love that. 
Okay, so let's take a look at the final image. So this is what I had in mind with this shot. Now I find that it helps to kind of see the Photoshop to kind of final transition because as you approach a scene like this one, you'll know instantly what's really easy to do in Photoshop, like knocking out some of the background pieces. You'll kind of be able to understand the potential in the shot. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the 2470 challenge. Please subscribe to the Adorama TV channel. Be sure to turn on notifications. I'd love to hear what you guys think about the video. Comment below. I don't always reply. I do my best to, but I do always read all of your comments and suggestions. So whatever you guys want to learn next, let me know. In the meantime, follow Renee. We're going to link her up one more time. And you guys can follow me at Pygirsa on Instagram. All right, peace.